Hi dancers, welcome back to our channel. I'm Julie and I'm the owner and one of the instructors here at Broche Ballet, a ballet school just for adults in Denver, Colorado. I am super excited to be here with you today. We are gonna be doing a two-part series on holding your turnout. This is one of my favorite topics. I love turnout, I'm obsessed with it. It's super awesome, it is what ballet is. I love teaching it, I love talking about it, I love hearing your thoughts about it. And I'm super excited to talk about how you can keep your turnout both at the bar and in the center. Before we get started, please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share our videos with all of your friends. It really does help us out when you watch our videos. We put out new videos every single Friday. Let's get started. Today's video is all gonna be about the bar. So, when I talk about holding turnout, I am talking about keeping your legs to their maximum rotation. I am not talking about forcing your turnout. I am not talking about, as I turn to the side, pushing your toes back past your knees. We don't want this, where your knees are pointing one way and your toes are, toes are pointing the other. I'm not talking about that. I just wanna be super clear. What I'm talking about is, if you start a combination with this much turnout, you do not want to end the combination with this much turnout. You want to start and end the combination with the same amount of turnout as, as you began with. That means you've held and maintained your turnout throughout the entire exercise. So this is not so bad when you're just standing, like let's say you're just standing here doing a tendu and a close. This standing leg doesn't tend to lose that much turnout, although it definitely can. What tends to happen is when we move, uh, when we shift our weight from one foot to the other, when we go up to releve and back down, these are all times and places where we lose turnout. Remember, your legs are attached straight on, right? Maybe you've got a little bit out, maybe you've got a little bit in, but for the most part, our legs are attached somewhat straight. Even if you can move your legs out pretty far to the side, you, you're gonna be out farther than what is natural, which means that your body is always trying to return to status quo. Your body is always trying to return to normal, and you need to fight against it. You need to learn the places where your body is gonna try to fight to come back to normal, and where you have to put up an equal and opposite fight to maintain your turnout. So let's talk about a couple of places that this happens. First, I'm gonna talk about a chasse at the bar. So if I started, let's say I started in first position at the bar, I'm just gonna put my hand here to get it out of the way. So I'm in first position here. I'm gonna take a plie, then I'm gonna slide my heel forward from my outside foot. What'll often happen here is as we plie and slide out, this foot comes forward turned in because it's a lot more natural for your body to maneuver itself with your legs facing them in their normal direction. So as we come forward with this, uh, with this chasse, we need to make sure that this leg is turned out on its way. Again, I wanna be super clear. I'm not talking about twisting your foot backwards or doing anything that's gonna compromise the structure of your knee or your ankle. That's not at all what this is about. This is about the angle of my foot staying the same between here and here. So if my foot starts here, if I took a picture of it from the top view, I would want it to be parallel to where it ended. Not more, not less. I would want it to be right in front, right at the same angle. So if I were to take that chasse, plie, chasse, I want both legs to be turned out. As I push off, let's say we're gonna push off to the front foot, this back foot is gonna to wanna to turn in as well because you're gonna go from having weight on it, helping support your turnout, to having no weight on it. And you're gonna to have to actively turn out your leg and activate those rotation muscles to get your back leg to turn out. So anytime we do this kind of transfer of weight where we've got weight on two feet, then we're gonna put weight on the other foot, both of our legs want to lose turnout pretty much the entire time, and we have to work extra hard to not let that happen. A ton lié is the other place this might happen. So I'm going to do this one facing you. If I started in first position, and I did a ton do side, and then I went to plié in second, when I push off, I don't want this to happen where this leg turns in, and I also don't want this to happen where this leg turns in. I want that to be a nice, smooth transfer of weight. So I'm in a tendu, I put it down to a plie with both heels coming forward. When I push off, I turn both my legs out. Then I close. And I want it again. If I took a picture of myself here and a picture of myself where I started, I would want my feet to be at the same exact angle. I wouldn't want to have lost turnout or have my heels apart or anything like that, where, I've, where, I, where I ended with less turnout than when I started with. The last place we're gonna talk about today is in a PK. So when we're doing a PK, 
This is when we step out onto one foot from the other foot. It's sort of similar to the things that we've done, but a lot of what we're learning, the dancing part of this whole thing, is transferring our weight from one foot to the other. And a PK, here's a PK su su as an example, is when you take your weight from one foot to both feet or to the other foot. It doesn't really matter which one. You can PK into so many different positions. So let's try a little PK arabesque. I'm gonna hop onto the other side of the bar to demonstrate this one for you. So in my PK arabesque, I'm gonna get started just a little distance from the, from the bar here. I'm gonna take one foot into a tendu front, doesn't matter which one, you can practice it on both. And then I'm gonna take a little plie on my standing foot or a fondue. So here I am in this fondue action, I'm bending and I'm with this front foot. When I PK up, I'm gonna PK to a little arabesque to show you this example. When I PK up, the natural thing to do is to turn my front leg, my PK leg in, because this feels really stable for your body, right? Your body is used to this position of the leg, but what we need it to do as we PK up, we need to PK up onto a rotated leg so your heel is coming forward. Again, always mentioning that we're not talking about forcing your turnout, we're not talking about more turnout than you have. We're just talking about keeping as much turnout as you have. So if I started with my leg here with this amount of turnout, heel facing this direction, as I PK up on it, I want to keep that same amount of turnout and not let it turn in. If I were to do like a PK arabesque plie releve, there are so many opportunities in there to lose my turnout, but I'm going to fight super hard by thinking about the backs of my legs coming through the fronts. So the inner thighs are spiraling forward, the heel is spiraling forward, both legs are really rotating like two gears against each other. So I'm going to try that PK arabesque plie releve. So here I am, I'm going to plie, this leg is going to be so ready. Right here, it's hard to be ready in the back of your leg. You're thinking more about the front of your leg being ready for that PK, because the rotation muscles in the back are a little stretched out when you're getting ready for a PK front, so it's hard to feel them. So I'm going to instead feel the inner thigh muscle super strong and tight and my knee super strong and tight. So I'm going to plie, PK up onto it, and then plie releve. My body loves being in parallel, so it's going to want to turn in. But we're not going to let it do that. As we plie, we're going to feel this knee opening up over the toe. This leg continues to rotate. They're going to feel so equal and opposite against each other. And then as we releve up again, we're going to keep feeling both legs rotating equally and opposite. So as we step onto one leg, whether that's on releve or on flat, you really want to make sure that leg is ready for you to take the weight. Because if you're not ready, if you're not expecting it, it's really just gonna wanna turn in. So you have to be really mindful of that as you do a PK, plie releve, transferring that weight, your body wants to go back to a neutral position. So turnout is one of those things where you can continue to turn out forever. Because the reason you need to continuously activate your turnout muscles is because, like I said at the beginning of this video, your legs are always trying to return back to, to neutral. And we are trying to put our legs in a place that's not our neutral position. And so we have to constantly work. It's not like a checkbox. Like, okay, I turned my legs out. I put them here sideways. It's like a constant energy. And every time anything changes, you need to put in more energy in order to keep it. So changes, we talked about today. We talked about four kinds of changes. We talked about a chasse, transferring from one foot to the other, a ton lié, stepping for, like going from one foot to the other. We talked about that. We talked about a pique, stepping up onto one foot. And we talked about a plié relevé once we got up to one foot on relevé. All of these are changes that happen in your stance, in how much of your foot is touching the ground, in which foot is touching the ground, where your weight is over your foot. All of these changes are times when your body wants to take that opportunity to return to neutral. And you gotta be ready ahead of time so that doesn't happen and you can prepare your body to maintain its turnout throughout the entire combination or whatever you're doing in your dancing. Well, dancers, I hope this was super helpful. Stay tuned for part two coming next Friday. In part two, we're gonna talk about how to do all of this stuff in the center. Until next time, take care.